Shalom, Kahala Yahawa, Bashem Yashai, Bashem Rukhokadash, the waters, my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who the house of David reborn again in this generation, and Shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who today were known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to get a bit into history so we could go over some things that took place that were described in the Bible that secular history has proven to be a fact. Now, what I have here is a book called The Mysteries of the Mexican Pyramids by Peter Tompkins. You know, I first seen this on, on social media. There was this little cutout, which that's what we're going to read. But the cutout doesn't give you the whole details along with other historic events. But we'll get into that in just a bit. So if you're uh, not familiar with the history of the Latinos and the Native Americans, right? One thing you, you understand is when the Europeans came over here to the Southern Americas and enslaved the Northern Kingdom, well, at least, you know, parts of them, right? The nation of Gad and and other tribes weren't affected by the European slavery. I think it was uh, it was either Peru or I think it was the Argentinians. I think it was the Peru actually, um, which is like the tribe of Asher. Um, parts of them never went into slavery because they escaped into the mountains. But again, that's another point, and I don't want to digress. So the, the point being is that be when the Europeans came over here, not only did they find out that we were the Israelites, right? If, when they came over here, a lot of them came with who, Hebrew interpreters. And what was what took place is a destruction of our history, the burning of relics, the burning of books, of testimonies that we gave, showing that we were the children of Israel. Now, like I said, you're gonna find out that the people written in the Bible, right? Because again, when you get into the Bible, you're gonna find no such thing as you know, the words Negro or Mexican or Haitians or Peruvians or Puerto Ricans, right? You're going to just find Israelites, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Issachar, right? The tribe of Ephraim and so on, right? And, and to find out what's really going on in the world, we have to, you know, tear back that curtain that has been placed in front of our eyes by the world's, you know, progression throughout history and also the devil purposely trying to hide the identities of who's who. And this is prophecy, right? This is uh, Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Because again, what we're not told is who we are as a people, okay? Growing up in this society, you're told that you're American, you're Mexican, you're African American, you're Chinese, Japanese, right? You come from uh, England, right? You're Sudanese and all these different things, right? None of these, the majority of these names do not go back to the original 18 nations described in Genesis 10, okay? Because right now there's about 197 nations that the UN recognizes that come from these 18 nations. Well, my point being is that Regardless of whatever you're calling yourself today, be it from family tradition or governmental indoctrination, you are one of these 18 nations, right? Any, everybody in the world goes back to one of these 18 nations. The Negro, Latino, Native Americans, we happen to go back to the people of Israel, Yasharala, which is Hebrew for he prints power. The so-called Caucasian race, they go back to the nation of Edom, these are the true identities according to the Bible. Now, this book, like I said, it goes through a lot of crazy details. They also talk about how the Native American Indians could have came from Babylon and all this stuff. But the point being is that it's not only this book that talks about the Hebrew origins of the Native American Indians, but there's thousands of books out there that has information about how 
of testimonies of how us Native American Indians said that we were Israelites, said that we belonged to certain tribes, said, you know, we would speak Hebrew and we also had Hebrew customs. Well, you know, how did all this happen? Well, let's, let's go to the Bible timeline, a visual representation of what took place. So going all the way back to around 722 BC, and so Israel was carried away, okay, because of all our idolatry, we didn't keep the commandments, right? and what happened is that the curses started to fall upon us, okay, and from there, when you continue, right, this is where you get about Tobit in the Bible, right, the days uh, were basically changed from 360 days a year to 365 days a year, like it is now, of a it says the Lord gave 15 years of life to King Hezekiah, right? And that's ultimately, uh, you know, caused all that to happen. But again, that's a lesson for another day. Well, back to the uh, Northern Kingdom, they stayed in captivity for about a hundred years. Okay, and after that happened, right? We eventually, you know, started to come up in society, right? Uh, some of us freed ourselves, and kind of how it always occurs during periods of captivities right just look at where the negro latino native americans are now in america uh when you know we started off in in captivity right the same thing happened in the past well ultimately what happened is that the babylonians came and destroyed the assyrians and for the most part freeing us as we were simply just descendants of servants in that land well some of it tells you here it says some returned to Israel, others seek new land. And that's what happened, right? You had the majority of the, of the uh, 10 tribes of Israel, the Northern Kingdom, the, uh, come out here to the Americas. And this could be found in 2 Ezra 13 and 40. Right? Let's get it real quick. This is, says, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king whom Salamansar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Right? And this ultimately is when we became captives. Okay? Because remember, the Israelites were taken out of the land. Uh, the Assyrians brought in the Kuthians, which are basically um, Persians, into that land. Right? To, to settle that so that way we wouldn't return. <clears throat> now, Back to 41. But they took this counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So like I said, right, some decided to return back to Israel. Right? We hear about some of the northern kingdom uh, people in the, in the New Testament that were along with the Messiah and the disciples. Right? So that's you know proof that some of the northern kingdoms did go back to, to uh, Jerusalem. But, like it says here, right, the, ma the majority came over here to the new these new lands, which we know today as America, but you, we're going to find out about why they decided to go there and what they called it. 42, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow pass places of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a, of a year and a half, and the same region is called Azarath. And Azarath, when you get into that word, it basically means unknown lands, right? It says, then, verse 46, and then dwelt they there until the latter time, right, the end days, the time we're living in, and now when they shall begin to come. See, and this is ultimately, that right there, this last part, is ultimately uh, referring to the North Atlantic slave trade when the Southern Kingdom would be brought over there to meet up with the Northern Kingdom so that way the Lord could have us here in the land of Babylon, or, you know, or basically in the uh, Western Hemisphere so that when everything goes down. Well, back to this book, Right? It talks about a testimony, a record that was kept, right? That, that us Native American Indians told these Europeans of who we were, okay? And not only that, but you also are going to read about a speculation of 
what were these explorers' conclusions of who we were from what we said, right? Let's actually read it real quick. This is a uh, Mysteries of the of the Mexican Pyramids by Peter Tompkins, page 79. It says, it says, in a manuscript written in Quechua in 1554 by several Maya Indians, its Spanish translator, Pedro Dionisios Jose Chinoy, had this to say. It is supposed in the manuscript that the three great Quechua nations mentioned in particular are descendants of the ten tribes of the kingdom of Israel, whom Salamansar reduced to perpetual captivity, and who, finding themselves in the confines of Assyria, decided to immigrate. The actual text ran, These then were the three nations of Quech Quechuas, and they came from where the sun rises, descendants of Israel, of the same language and of the same customs. Right, so I'm gonna stop there, but we're gonna keep going. But do you see that? So this is a historic, you know, um, telling of who the Native American Indians are. Okay, we are like it tells you here the the descendants of Israel. Okay, from where the sun rises. Right. So there's another Aztec folklore called Aslan. Right, where it tells you that in the end times that um, Quetzalcoatl is gonna come back. He's going to raise us up into the skies like eagles. And we're going to return back to Aslan, which is over the Great River, right? Basically up the Atlantic Ocean. And which, let's go ahead and read it. And let's get back to this real quick. But real quick, before we, we continue, I, want, I just wanted to point out where it says the three nations of Quechua, Quechuas. You got to understand, when we came over here, we were the ten tribes, right? We were our individual tribes. But over time... When you get into the supposed history of the Native American Indians, because again, the Book of Mormon is supposedly the historic records of what happened from the time when we came over here in the 600 BC period, when we knew that we were the Israelites, to the time when we basically went all Lord of the Flies on ourselves, and we destroyed each other, and we went, and great wars broke out, to eventually to the point where we had been reduced to you know savages right we had lost uh, the most of the the technology a lot of the knowledge the information so by the time that we were rediscovered by the outside world you know we only knew about native things things that survivors of a great destruction would have known right most of there was no metal weapons amongst us because all by by that time the metal would have rusted away it would have been destroyed Right? This is why um, us Native Americans were in such a degraded state, right? Because we had gone back, we had re reverted to an earlier type of civilization, right? We didn't have the knowledge for metallurgy, right? We lost that technology. We didn't have blast furnaces over here. We didn't have the technology or the, or even beasts of burden like they have back in the East Hemisphere, right? We didn't have the donkeys. We didn't have the the like the big bulls like those type of things those weren't over here right at least to the cap capacity where we had captured them and domesticated them so my point being is that when it says here the three great nations understand that these are the israelites who had now been the survivors of whatever took place which supposedly the book of mormon covers which again the book of mormon is not biblical at all okay a lot of shit's been edited right to to fit an edomite narrative right joseph smith was a more likely a freemason they definitely try to hide that shit but he obviously heard this information from the native american indians and he basically took it like esau always does and he made it his own well by the time that the indians had received all this information and they were telling all the europeans of who they were the ten tribes had turned into the three nations of quechuas okay because remember Everybody's gonna it's gonna be it's like the game of telephone details get changed the further you go out And that's ultimately why they say here that the the three nations of Quechua's right instead of saying the ten tribes of Israel But they have that information right that let, let's continue and hear the testimony what the Indians said It says in it in a testation of what they had written 
the Indians signed the document on September 28, 1554, saying, We have written that which by tradition our ancestors told us who came from from the other part of the sea, from Givan Tolan, bordering on Babylonia. Right, so you see that? So that Givan Tolan, that right there is ultimately talking about Israel, right? But I'm not sure why that name went down. I know to, to, uh, Tola, right, was the name of a Issacharite uh, king, or at least like a nobleman, right? One of the, the founding sons of Issachar was uh, Tola, and there's a lot of names with this type of phonetic spelling in it. But this may have been what they called Israel or the land or Samaria. Okay. But the point being is they got the neighbor of Israel correct, Babylonia. Okay. Now, let me continue reading. And this is going to go past what's on the screen here. But I, I have the book here. So just, just listen to what I'm going to say. And it says, in another manuscript, Votan's arrival. Now, real quick, this name here, Votan, this is talking about a foreigner who the the Native American Indians seen as a as a great person, right? This isn't Yahweh Shai, right? This is just another great visitor, right? He he brought with him culture, information, technology, basically uh, civilization, okay? That's who this guy is, Votan. And it says, in another manuscript, Votan's arrival is dated at 1000 BC. Now consider this, America was created in 1776, okay? A lot of us can only perceive the creation of America. We can't go back further than that. And that's only been, what, like a little bit past 250 years? So 400 years had passed by this time can you imagine what could have happened in all that period if just from 1776 to right now, you know, everything we think about, we think about George Washington, Benjamin Franklin and all the technology and all the changes that have taken place here in America. And that only took in under 300 years. That's what's happened. Now, can you imagine in 400 years what could have happened here in the Americas? Consider that, right? It says, Votan's arrival is dated at 1000 BC which led modern scholars to suggest that Wotan and his men in petticoats could have been Phoenicians. You see that right there? You see, Phoenicians would be what you would call uh, Hamites, okay? Now, and again, another thing too, when it says 1000 BC, more like this is not 1000 BC because again, the Israelites didn't get here to the lands of the America until about 600 BC. Now, this dating here, more likely goes back to, and it's not even the correct time, This, but chances are they're getting their, their dates mixed up because they're more likely noting how the Phoenician armies or the Phoenician navies would come over here to the Americas when they were under the, the command of King Solomon, okay? He had the, uh, the Phoenician or the navy of Tarshish, Tarshish being Phoenicians, that would later go on to create Carthage. Well, they would come over here to the Americas and it would take them three years, a year and a half to get there, same time that it took the, the Northern Kingdom to come over here, and one and a half years to go back, right? And that's more likely what they're stating with this 1,000 years. But again, this is just, I just wanted to make that note, okay? So don't, don't worry too much about these dates because Esau doesn't have the true narrative, and if he does, he's obviously trying to change shit around. So th more likely they came after uh, after the Israelites, obviously they came after the Israelites were, he, were here and that took place around 600 BC, okay? It says, which led modern scholars to suggest that Votan and his men in petticoats could have been Phoenicians. Constance Irwin in her book, Fair Gods and Stone Faces, agrees that Votan and his followers could well have been Phoenicians, but places the date somewhat later. Look, see, I told you that, look, that's exactly what I was just saying. Saying, she says the great city which Votan could have visited for trade might have been Babylon, the greatest city in the Middle East, a, a favorite market for Phoenician merchants, where stood the magnificent Tower of Babel, rebuilt by 
Nebopolassar and his successor Nebuchadnezzar in the 7th or 6th century. That means 600 to 500 BC. Okay? And it says, after his death, Votan was associated. Well, you know what? That's, that's it. But that's my point being, okay? So not only do these historians tie these this visitor, Votan, to Phoenicians, right? Hamites. But now, let's go to another part of history and let's read about how the Americas were discovered, not by Columbus, direct, you know, but by Carthage. Again, and if you don't know who Carthage is, Carthage is the city-state that forever will be known as the enemy of Rome, okay? They were in the northern parts of Africa, and a lot of Israelites fled to Carthage. But because Tyre, which is the, the name of the Carthaginians before they were Carthage, when they were in the land of Israel amongst us, they always got along with us, okay? When you read the book of Genesis, you can see how our forefather Abraham dealt with them, right? Shechem and all of them, I believe, right? They were good people to us. So that being said, let's read about how these Phoenicians or these Carthaginians, which is what they were called at the time, let's read about how what they said when they came over here to the Americas, what they found. It says, Voyages of the Phoenicians. Diodorus Cilicius related that the Phoenicians discovered a large island in the Atlantic Ocean beyond the Pillars of Hercules. The Pillars of Hercules is basically the southern tips of Spain and the northern tips of, of uh, Libya, okay, or Carthage. Okay? Between those two parts starts the Atlantic Ocean, and those are referred to as the Pillars of Hercules. It says, several days journey from the coast of Africa. This island abounded in all manner of riches. The, and check that out. See, that's why Solomon sent the, the Phoenicians over here, right? It says, the soil was exceedingly fertile. The scenery was diversified by rivers, mountains, and forests. It was the custom of the inhabitants to retire during the summer to magnificent country houses which stood in the midst of beautiful gardens, fish and game were found in great abundance. The climate was delicious and the trees, were, trees bore fruit at all seasons of the year. The Phoenicians discovered this fortunate island by accident, being driven on its coast by contrary winds. On their return, they gave glowing accounts of its beauty and fertility and the Tyrians, who were also noted sailors, desired to colonize it. And the reason why they're called Tyrians is because these are the original Tarsh people of Tarshish, okay? It says, th these Hamites, it says, But the Senate of Carthage opposed their plain, either through jealousy and a, wi and a wish to keep any commercial benefit that might be derived from it for themselves, or as Diodorus re relates, because they wish to use it as a place of refuge in case of necessity. And this is from the book uh, Diodorus Seleucius, The Native Races of the Pacific States of North America, Primitive History, page 67. So there you go, Akiam. Not only does this book, you know, show that or have a historic testament from the Native American Indians saying that they are the descendants of the Israelites, but you have two historians coming to the conclusion that we, that the Native American, that the, I'm sorry, the Native American Indians are the Israelites. And then not only that, but that they also have evidence that the Phoenicians, the, the true Hamites came over here, okay? They, that's what that whole Votan, you know, visiting uh, over here to the Americas was, okay? And we just read the Carthaginian accounts of them coming over here and seeing seeing us living in a state who, you know, who we were. So there you go, Akim. So, so prophecy, history, 
coming together to, to confirm confirm itself and to give those who can you know understand this and can receive it more faith to know that the northern kingdom are the Latinos and Native Americans. So either way, hopefully this lesson was edifying Akim. Until next time, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yashai, Bashem Rukabradash. Shalom.